We're closing in on the very end of Chapter 5 of Battlefield 5 now, and DICE has activated this week's Tides of War, and that brings us a chance to unlock the M3 Grease Gun, a very iconic weapon from the World War II era. It's an American-made weapon with the purpose of replacing the Thompson submachine gun during the war, but the Grease Gun ended up serving alongside the Thompson after delays to production stopped the weapon getting into the hands of the soldiers that needed them. In Battlefield 5, DICE is pitching this as a slow-firing, high-damage output weapon with a three-shot kill capability in close quarters, and that makes it extremely powerful in the right situations. And it's also got a hidden feature that I'm going to tell you about later on in the video. Okay, so first of all, you do have to unlock the M3 Grease Gun, but this week, unlocking it really isn't that difficult. All of the nodes on the Tides of War list, they are just things that you would normally do during a normal round of Conquest. And so even if you weren't trying to unlock it, you are probably going to end up unlocking it anyway. But of course you will be because it's a new weapon. DICE has put an extreme weather playlist live for this week's Tides of War, and that runs alongside the challenges. It's called Rain or Shine, and it puts eight of the game's maps into a conquest rotation, and it activates the map's most severe weather setting permanently for the entire round. So it doesn't go away, it doesn't appear and then disappear. It's there from the start right to the end. Now, for some maps, this doesn't really change too much, but for others, you end up with an even more chaotic atmosphere. And I would argue for some of the maps, it actually makes them better. Fiel 652 is now permanently covered in a windy snowstorm. Narvik, that gets its own snowstorm, although it's not as dark and intense as the one on Fiel. Devastation, it gets this grey fog covering and that darkens the map and it brings in a real post-bombing feeling. Then we've got Darude Sandstorm playing 24-7 on Hamada, and you better be prepared for the intense yellow colour grading that comes with that. Mercury replaces the sunny Greek skies with a dirty looking rainstorm. Aerodrome gets this haze and rain covering. Marita is engulfed in a dense fog. And Pacific Storm, that brings the thunder and the lightning into the mix. Now I played around on every single map all the way through the rotation, and I've got to say that I did actually prefer some of the maps with their extreme weather on. Fiel isn't so bomber spammy because, of course, the pilots can't see the infantry running around on the ground. And with the intense wind, flanking as an infantry soldier becomes much more rewarding. Your footsteps, they're somewhat lost in the audio mix, so you can kind of creep up behind people instead. Devastation becomes this really dark, dirty World War II setting that I think we've all come to expect from all of the films that have been created about wartime Europe. Marita becomes even more of a close quarters playground with the fog. It creates these little pockets of action. And Pacific Storm with its flashes of lightning, that just turns the chaos up to 11. But getting back to the grease gun though, once you've unlocked it, you are presented with a very different type of SMG to anything that we've really got in the game at the moment. Out to 15 meters, as I've already said, it's a three-shot kill, and that makes it absolutely monstrous in close quarters if you can land your shots. Now, 15 meters doesn't sound like a big distance, but as an example here, going inside most of the buildings in Battlefield 5, so maps like Marita that are full of those small houses, that puts you inside a 15 meter range. So if you go in with a grease gun, you are going to absolutely dominate. And there are plenty of other great close quarters fighting locations available to you in Battlefield 5. There are some clips in this video today that, that show just how powerful this weapon can be and how quickly it can dispatch people back to the spawn screen. And up close, several times, this kind of surprised me, I was actually beating Type 2A SMG players. And that now means something, because as of two weeks ago, Battlefield 5 has become infested with that weapon because people just want to use it all the time because it fires so fast and it can kill people so, so quickly. But because of the high damage output of the Grease Gun, you can now beat those players, not with rate of fire, but with raw damage output. There is one downside that I have found with the Grease Gun so far, and that is the rate of fire. In certain situations, it does leave a lot to be desired, just 450 rounds per minute. It is quite a lot slower than some other weapons out there. 
Now, because of the extremely high damage output at close range, it doesn't really matter when the enemy is right on top of you. You can kill them pretty much no problem. But once you reach past the 15 meter mark, once you lose that three bullet to kill and you push towards 30 meters and beyond, that's where the M3 or the Grease Gun is going to start losing gunfights more and more often. Until the 30 meter mark, there is really no other SMG in the game that can beat it when it comes to bullets to kill. But past that point, it mixes in with the rest of the weapons available, and at 40 meters, it's actually overtaken by the MAB with the shortest bullet to kill. That means if you're operating inside the 40 meter mark most of the time, which as a medic, you are most likely doing because you've got to heal people and you've got to revive people, the grease gun is a good choice. But you have to be aware that the slow rate of fire means that the further the enemy is away, there are more weapons out there that are going to kill you faster because they can fire faster. Just because the grease gun does have brilliant bullet damage at close range, that doesn't mean it's going to help you at mid to long range. It does start to struggle past that 30 to 40 meter mark. Now, the Grease Gun does have specializations that you can take advantage of, just like the rest of the weapons in Battlefield 5. You get two paths with this one, one of them focusing on hip fire and the other focused on aimed accuracy. Down the left-hand side, you get hip fire. Slings and swivels, enhanced grips, polished action and suppressor. And then down the right-hand side, you have quick aim, custom stock, lightened stock and recoil buffer. And those are going to help you with your aim down sight statistics. But since the M3, the Grease Gun already has fairly good hip fire stats and the high damage at close range, I'd suggest equipping it mostly towards the left side of the tree. Now I chose the right side at level one, so I'd have quick aim on the weapon in case I did want to aim down the sights for a gunfight, which at slightly longer ranges you might want to do, but mostly the side dedicated to improving hip fire is more effective for the Grease Gun. Now, the suppressor on level 4, on the left hand side, that is really interesting because apart from applying a suppressor to the grease gun, it doesn't actually appear to do anything else at all, at least on the surface. And you do have to look a little bit further, and I had to look on Reddit to find out these answers. Now I would have thought putting a suppressor on the weapon would have made it sound different, quite significantly different, but that doesn't appear to be the case here. According to community manager Adam Freeman, the DICE team decided not to implement a hugely different set of sounds for the suppressed version of the M3, but instead the volume of the sound changes. So if you're using a suppressed grease gun, the firing sounds will be slightly quieter than an unsuppressed grease gun. And uh, there's a quick comparison here that you can listen to. You might still not have been able to tell the difference that much there, but Freeman also went on to state that the weapon sounds are dependent on the environment you're in and the distance to the weapon that you are. If in first person you're firing the gun, you're very unlikely to really hear the difference between the two different sounds if you've got a suppressed one or an unsuppressed one. But if other soldiers around you are using the grease gun, then you are more likely to notice whether that weapon has got a suppressor on it or whether it doesn't. So the sound is one thing that the suppressor affects, whether you can hear the difference in the sound or not. Apparently there is a difference according to DICE, so that's one thing. But there is something else that the suppressor affects, and this is the almost completely hidden feature at the moment in Battlefield 5. DICE has explained that when a suppressed weapon is fired in Battlefield 5 multiplayer, if the bullet hits a target, that bullet does not deliver directional damage indicators to the player that you hit with it. So that red ring that you get in the middle of the screen when you take damage and it moves around to show you the direction you were hit from, that won't show up if you're using a suppressed grease gun and it won't show up if you're using the commando carbine as well, which has that integrated suppressor. Now as far as I'm aware, this is the first Battlefield game ever to implement a system like this. Previous games that have included suppressors they would stop you from appearing on the minimap when you were firing. But since neither Battlefield 1 nor Battlefield 5 has had the feature where if you shoot, you appear on the minimap, that was changed for tactical reasons, then that meant that the suppressors in those games, 
were really nothing more than additions to your weapon that would change the look of them. And that's what I think we all thought was happening with the Commando Carbine in Battlefield 5 and now the Grease Gun as well. That was the case until we learnt today that there was this extra layer of functionality under the surface. And it's a really cool piece of information were you actually to know about it. So I think DICE could probably do a better job at explaining this in the specialization menu when you select the suppressor because at the moment the only way we found out about this was via a reddit thread reply from the community manager and not everyone goes on reddit to read replies from the community manager most people don't do that more people out there i think need to be aware of this extra functionality of the suppressors in battlefield 5 so some text on the specialization screen would be a good way to communicate that but overall, I am really liking the M3 Grease Gun. It's certainly a change of pace to the Type 2A that DICE added a couple of weeks ago, and right now it is a monstrous close quarters weapon. If you're using it within 15 meters, you are going to be taking people down seriously fast. Now, I have heard some rumblings that there will be further weapon balance and TTK changes coming to Battlefield 5 in the future. It seems that DICE is sticking to their words that they are going to continue tweaking and changing things from update 5.2. But for now, this grease gun is a great addition to the game as it stands. I still don't really like the weapon balance nor the TTK changes that we are actually using, but the M3 and the Type 2A have made me enjoy the gunplay a little bit more. And I still expect that the Grease Gun will remain a deadly weapon up close, even if there are more weapon balance TTK changes, because it's not the close range damage that Update 5.2 and the Hotfix screwed up, it's the long range damage. So I think the Grease Gun should be safe if anything else changes. But a big thanks for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts down below on the Grease Gun. Have you unlocked it yet? Are you liking using it? Or are you going to stick with the Type 2A like 90% of the Battlefield community at the moment? But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.